After this story, you'll probably never look at a spruce tree the same way again. You thought trees just stood around looking pretty? Think again. Turns out, trees can talk. And with that, welcome to the Goodish News Channel. I'm Ashley, your professional pessimist. Around here, I avoid all the doom and gloom going on around us and only cover news stories that won't leave you feeling depressed. Also, my neighbors are getting a new roof, so if you hear the sounds of pneumatic tools working in the background, I'm sorry. Kinda rude they didn't ask me if this was a good time for a new roof to be installed, but whatever. Back to our talking trees. The word talk might not be totally accurate, but trees can communicate. And it turns out they communicate during a solar eclipse, but it doesn't start there. The trees actually communicate before the eclipse even happens, as if they're anticipating the change in solar activity. Scientists discovered that spruce trees in the Dolomites, that's in Italy, not only react to a solar eclipse, but actually anticipate it. Hours before the eclipse, trees across the forest start syncing their internal signals, almost like they're part of the same network. Foreshadowing. The synchronization was most pronounced in older trees. They responded first and more strongly than the younger trees. Researchers believe these older trees act as memory banks, storing information from past events and possibly using this knowledge to help inform and prepare younger trees. I know it sounds like some weird hippie sci-fi nonsense, but this is legit peer-reviewed science. And how, may you ask, do trees communicate? Through the wood wide web. But seriously, that's what people call it. This is an underground network of mycorrhizal fungi. These fungi form symbiotic relationships with tree roots, creating a huge network that allows trees to exchange nutrients, water, and chemical messages. Trees can send early warning signals about threats like drought, disease, or insect attacks through the network. Neighboring trees can then adjust their behavior in response, like boosting their own defenses. Trees also use these networks to share resources and help their weaker neighbors. They can even communicate with trees of other species. This communal behavior helps the whole forest adapt to environmental changes and stressors. If it isn't apparent by now, I'm a bit of a tree nerd. My favorite being the quaking aspen. Yes, I have a favorite tree. What? You don't have a favorite tree? But back to the boring old spruce trees in the Dolomites. You may be thinking, okay, Ashley, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you've convinced me that trees can talk. But how do scientists measure their communication? Great question, thanks for asking. The study used custom-built sensors attached to the trees capable of measuring changes in their bioelectrical potentials. And what are bioelectrical potentials? Another great question, you're full of them today. They're tiny voltage differences across a tree's cells, basically little electrical signals that show how the tree is responding to its environment. Scientists noticed a change in these signals 14 hours before the eclipse even happened, and they kept it up for another 17 hours afterward. It's like the trees were giving everyone in the forest a heads up, then talking about it once it was over. Waves of electrical activity were seen moving between trees, almost like messages being passed along, especially from the older trees to the younger ones. So that goes back to our old friend, the wood wide web. I still feel stupid saying that. Now your final question may be, but how did the trees know an eclipse was coming? And for that one, I don't have an answer. I was going to say I'm stumped, but after the wood wide web, there's not enough room for another tree pun in this segment. We don't totally know how trees can sense and prepare for eclipses. Some scientists think it might have to do with how trees respond to tiny shifts in gravity, like the kind that happen when the sun and moon line up during an eclipse. Whatever the reason, one thing's clear. These findings are more proof that plants aren't just passive background players. They're active members of their ecosystems capable of working together in ways that are sometimes seen in groups of animals. See, I told you trees were cool. Now you're a tree nerd too, aren't you? Welcome. Now we need t-shirts to make it official. The next time you walk through a forest, just remember the trees are watching and probably talking about your choice of wearing zip off pants because even trees have standards. Ouch! What do you think you're doing? This story is Google Earth meets James Bond. From the late 60s through the 90s, Cambodia was caught in a ruthless civil war. Both sides laid landmines like they were going out of style, over 10 million of them. Fast forward to today, and it's estimated that more than half of those explosives are still buried everywhere from the jungle to farmland. The war ended in 1998, but to this day, dozens of people are injured or killed every year by leftover landmines. Since the war ended, more than 20,000 people have been killed. Another 40 35,000 have been injured, many losing limbs or their ability to work. 
one of the biggest challenges. The landscape has changed so much, it's nearly unrecognizable from when the mines were first laid. Fields that are now farmland or villages that were once battlefields make it hard to know where mines might be buried. So how do you find landmines that have been forgotten about for decades in a landscape that's changed beyond recognition? Enter the Hexagon Spy Satellites. Back in the 70s and 80s, the US military launched these satellites to take high resolution pictures of Earth, using film, by the way, which they dropped back to Earth in capsules. Take that, Instagram. These images were top secret for decades, but in 2011, nearly 30,000 of them were declassified and made public. Now humanitarian groups like the Halo Trust are overlaying the old black and white images with today's satellite maps and are able to figure out where old roads, trails, and military routes used to be. Prime locations for hidden landmines. Imagine farming your field and not realizing you're driving your tractor over what used to be a military supply route. As Cambodia's farming gets more high tech, tractors and heavy machines are waking up old anti-vehicle mines that have been sleeping for decades. These spy photos aren't just historical artifacts, they're life-saving tools even decades later. Of course, finding the danger zones is just the first step. Clearing landmines is painstaking work. Cambodia has cleared about 1,200 square miles so far with an estimated 180 square miles to go. The goal is to have a mine-free Cambodia by 2030. Remember, sometimes the best way to save lives in the present is by looking at the past from space. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth circling satellite, one of the great scientific feats of the age. This next story will make you wonder how humans have survived for so long as a species. A 27-year-old Chinese student living in Japan had to be rescued from Mount Fuji not once, but twice in the same week. Most people climb Mount Fuji during the official season, which runs from July to September. Because that's when the trails are open, the weather is less likely to turn you into a popsicle, and there are actual first aid stations. But our hero? Oh no no no. He decided to go in April when the trails are closed, the signs are gone, and the only thing waiting at the top is frostbite and regret. So on April 22nd, the man set off solo, braved the snow and wind, and actually made it to the summit of Japan's tallest and most iconic mountain, a staggering 12,388 feet. That was all well and good until he came down with altitude sickness that was so bad he couldn't move. And he lost his crampons, those spiky things you wear on your boots to keep you from sliding down the mountain like a cartoon character. Since getting back down was no longer an option, he called for a lift, an airlift. Look, no shade. That's what rescue teams are for. So that's where the story ends, right? Oh, you sweet summer child. During the rescue, the man had to leave behind some of his gear and his cell phone. I mean, I understand that people can get separation anxiety when their phone isn't within an arm's reach, but apparently this guy really needed his TikTok fix because instead of buying a new one, four days later, he decided to climb back up Mount Fuji, solo again, just to get his phone. I guess his personal motto is no phones left behind. Because you're smart, you've probably already guessed what happened next. Yep, same mountain, same problem. Altitude sickness that left him immobile. Again, see, you knew what would happen. It's amazing he didn't think of it. However, this time, he didn't have his phone to call for help. But luckily, he was discovered by another off-season climber who was able to assist. Cue the rescue team, again because of course. The man was once again airlifted from the mountain and taken to the hospital. No word yet on whether or not he was successful at retrieving the phone, but I think it's probably safe to say his next excursion should just be to the Apple store. It's safer for everyone and a lot less money. When is buying a new iPhone ever the cheaper option? This might be the one situation. There's no law against climbing Mount Fuji out of season and Japan doesn't charge for mountain rescues. But let's just say Japanese social media had a lot of thoughts about this. People are calling for him to be billed for the second rescue. And I can't say I disagree. Because if they don't, this guy seems like the type to believe that third time's the charm. No readout yet if the air is breathable. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. If you're looking for more good news in your life, be sure to check out my video from last week where I discussed the transformation of the world's largest landfill to New York's largest park. How a Michigan man got stuck in quicksand but ended up with a girlfriend and a turtle that's getting a second chance at life. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing so we can ignore all the bad news together.